Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. In this video I want to talk a bit about the seven hermetic principles as outlined in the Kabbalion by William Walker Atkinson. Now some of you may have heard of the Kabbalion, and it's a book that was essentially authored under the pseudonym The Three Initiates to the beginning of the last century, and later research by various people basically came to the conclusion that it was by this New Thought author called William Walker Atkinson. Now this guy wrote a lot of good books and he had some interesting information but a lot of people are unsure about this work in particular because it's a work about uh, hermetic philosophy written by a New Thought author. Now as someone who quite enjoys this book I've gone into it in quite some depth and the thing is I feel that it is in line with Hermetic philosophy. It does borrow some principles of New Thought and it does implement these in the book, but overall it's still a great beginner's Hermetic book to get an idea of some of the basics of Hermeticism and some of the things covered. Also alongside this it covers these seven principles that I think are just fantastic principles for uh, the mind and how things work in the universe. Whether you're interested in Hermetics or New Thought or neither, these principles are very interesting and I want to go into them in some detail in this video. So to get started, let's go into the first principle. This is the principle of mentalism, which is the idea that all is mind. So what does this mean, all is mind? Well essentially this principle is outlining the idea that all of the universe is consciousness, that there is no actual separation between the mind and matter. And this is controversial to some people, but this is essentially an idea that is quite common throughout spirituality, the idea that there is one mind that we share and that individuation is actually something that we create as an illusory perception of reality rather than as a result of us actually being completely separate and not being in touch with one another. It also embodies the idea that mind actually controls everything that we experience in the sense that even if there was only two separate things, mind and matter, and these two things didn't interact directly, all that you experience still has to come through mind. So all that you do first comes through mind, and all that comes to you, all the circumstances that happen to you, are then filtered by your mind before they're given to you. This is something that we see in idealism, and although some people feel that idealism is a way of sort of abstracting and obfuscating the world and not taking physical matter as reality, I think it's a rational way of viewing the world because what idealism suggests is just that we cannot know for a fact anything outside of our own minds because everything comes through our own minds and so all our perception, all our experiments, all of this are first clouded by our own mind and if our own mind isn't right then we're not going to experience reality right essentially. Um, now you don't have to agree with this, this is just my personal view on it, so take that with a pinch of salt. Anyway, let's move on to the second principle. That's the principle of correspondence. In other words, that which is above is like that which is below. That the things on the different planes of existence and the different levels of reality, scaling all the way up to the things in the stars, down to the things in the atom, are correlated in some fashion. Now if we take the idea that all is one mind and that we're all connected, then this makes sense because if you think about it, you can't, you know, push one side of the chair and expect the other side of the chair not to move as well. Yes, the other side of the chair might appear not affected, but it has gone through some movement, even if it's just a slight turn. And this is the nature of reality, that while a change in one place doesn't immediately appear to affect something in another place, all actions ripple out and through a chain of events and a sequence of events that might take you know a day, it might take a thousand years or even a million or billion years, eventually all things end up affecting things even light years away eventually. Now as for what else this implies, 
Well, this is used in a lot of things. The, there's the idea that if you look at a smaller system, you can understand the larger system. Or if you look at a larger system, you can understand the smaller system. And this is part of the principle between a lot of ancient sciences like astrology. Now, it's up to you whether you want to believe astrology is still a legitimate and real thing or not, but basically the reason that astrology looked to the stars was not essentially this idea that necessarily the stars were affecting people down below, but more that those movements of the stars could correspond to smaller cycles down on Earth. For example, the moon takes around 30 days to make a cycle similar to the woman's menstrual period and the for example uranus has a similar period to the human life so half of a cycle of uranus can be correlated to the midlife crisis and things like that and essentially they were just using these things in the heavens as clocks for natural cycles as a correlation in that way and the, there's lots of things like this. It, if you study, for example, a small group of people, you can learn about people as a whole. You can learn about how people function in groups and such. And we use these principles in science. We, we study small samples of data to get information about a greater whole. And this is a simple principle of life that is fairly obvious. Though I think a lot of people get confused exactly about what it means, because some people assume that if that which is above is like that which is below, that everything is the same and everything is directly correlating all the time, but it doesn't have to mean that. It just means that you can learn things about the smaller things from the bigger things, and you can learn things about the bigger things from the smaller things, and so on, and there are a lot of ways to correlate the two. This also goes for the idea of a spiritual world, in other words, the world inside the mind, and the physical world. The things in the spiritual world, the things in our mind, the ideas in our mind and that, they affect the physical world because, you know, we take an idea and we make it into something physical. And our ideas affect how we act, our ideas affect our circumstances and so on. So the two correlate and the two interact in such a way. Now, the next principle. That's the principle of vibration, which says that nothing is at rest and everything is moving. And this is something that we see in science, you know, energy is just vibration. Energy vibrates at different speeds, and depending on the speed that it's vibrating, it can be anywhere from a solid to a gas to a plasma, and it affects, it affects which element the item is, it affects how the thing is behaving and so on. All things are just energy vibrating at different levels. And the other thing that this principle relates to is actually... Uh, the natural state of flow in life. In other words, uh, everything comes to an end. Everything starts and then eventually comes to an end. You can't, you know, start life and then just go on and on and on. You start to decay and you start to lose your health and th things like this. So there is always movement. Even when something appears to be still, it is actually decaying or it's actually moving in some direction. Next up, we have the principle of polarity. And this principle is the idea that we have these two opposites of everything. And these opposites are actually different degrees of the same thing. For example, black and white are just different degrees of the color scale. Um, good and evil are just different degrees of action that, depending on your place in all of it, something will appear good to you, but evil to someone else, and vice versa. Um, Hot and cold are just different degrees on a scale. You know, you if your natural body temperature was 100 degrees, then you would find 70 degrees cold. If your natural body temperature was, you know, minus 100 degrees, then you would find minus 90 degrees boiling hot. It's all relative. And polarity also embodies a principle through which the media is expert at controlling people. Because what the media does is it utilizes polarity. And when someone is polarized, they essentially think in the polar opposites. In other words, they only see black and white. They don't see the in-between. Or they don't see how both sides can perhaps be right in some way or another. And the media use this in the sense that, you know, they'll make a point and they always take the extreme. They'll never take the middle ground. They'll always say, like, oh, this person is evil and they deserve to be executed and, and all this, just so that the people who believe that will be behind them, but also so that the people who don't believe that will be so angry and so moved by this completely 
seemingly ridiculous statement to them that they'll attack the media and they'll generate more views and more controversy around the media which gets them more sales because all publicity is good publicity in the media for the newspapers themselves and the media stations themselves so they utilize this all the time you know if there's a police officer that's shot someone innocent then they'll make an article that gets people angry they'll make an article saying well perhaps the police officer was justified sure the guy didn't have a gun but maybe he thought he did and then lots of people will be up in arms and think what the hell how can you write something like that so they'll be linking all their friends to the article and saying look look what these idiots said and suddenly everyone's viewing the article they're getting lots of advertising revenue and their job was successful so this principle is something we want to learn to understand and avoid letting it control us because we have to learn to depolarize ourselves and instead to see the gray areas to see that all things aren't just black or white and also to understand other people's view even if we're adamant that they're wrong we need to understand why they have their view and learn to see things from other people's perspectives so next up we have the principle of rhythm and this is the idea that everything has cycles and rhythm going back to what I mentioned earlier about astrology this is another reason why astrology was used because it wasn't just about you know correlating to these various cycles but it was about these cycles repeating over and over and being able to see how many times it is repeated or to see the interaction between different cycles and stuff like that and rhythm and cycles appear in all areas of life there are cycles where people are more ready to go to war and they want to fight and countries are disagreeing and so on and there are cycles of great peacetime where even previous enemies are cooperating and wanting to work together there are cycles where business is booming and the stock markets are all up and everyone's making lots of money and there are also great economic depressions where everyone is seemingly losing money except the super rich all of these cycles are constantly moving around and by learning to notice where these cycles are and what influences them how they affect us we can somewhat compensate and avoid the sway of this rhythm on us in other words we're normally pushed around by these cycles without seeing where they're happening we don't look at what's going on in the market so when the depression or a crash happens then we lose our money but if we're more aware of these things and we actually keep alert and keep our eyes on these things then we'll be able to foresee them when they come and avoid the damage and also to take advantage of the good things that happen as well and the next principle is the principle of cause and effect the idea is that every effect has a cause and every cause has an effect so if you do something it cannot be without consequence you might seem to do something and feel like there is nothing that's happened from it but there is some kind of ripple even if the ripple is only an internal one in other words you do something and your thoughts change because of it there is always an effect for every action and also every effect can be traced back to the cause that brought it about now some of these things won't be so obvious and we would need thousands of years to be able to work out what caused them and some of the causes aren't direct like sometimes something will happen because of a long chain of events and we'll look at the immediate cause you know the thing that directly caused it and we'll think that that was the overall cause when in actual fact it was a series of events that sparked that little push that made it happen and understanding that you cannot do something without it affecting the world around you is important it's it's the principle of karma that if you do good things good things happen to you and if you do bad things bad things happen to you now when i say karma i don't mean it in the traditional idea of you know you do x amount of good and x amount of good happens back to you it's more the simple idea that if you're good to the people around you those people are likely to be good to you if you're bad to the people around you then those people are likely to be bad to you and this goes in all areas of life you know treat others how you want to be treated essentially now the next and final principle is the principle of gender 
And this is one that confuses a lot of people. The idea is that in everything there is gender. There is a male and a female, or a masculine and feminine principle. Now, when I say masculine and feminine, I do not mean like actual physical human gender. I mean it more in the sense like male and female plugs. In other words, you know, there's one that is active and one that is receiving and so when this principle is talked about a lot of people can get the wrong impression they can think that it's saying you know men should be like this women should be like this which is not true whatsoever um, and in actual fact it's talking about the idea that everything has active and receptive parts to it and this can be seen in all sorts of things this can be seen in creation this can be seen in business this can be seen in trade there are these two aspects to everything and also there are these two aspects to the mind in other words every person has these two aspects to their mind and this further confuses people because the people who assume that the masculine and feminine are correlated to actual physical gender miss the fact that uh, both male and female people have the masculine and feminine principles in their minds now what do I mean by these principles well primarily the conscious and the subconscious mind the idea is the masculine or the active principle is the conscious mind and the feminine or the receptive principle is the subconscious mind and uh, understanding one only gives you so much you need to understand both and learn how they work together to fully get a grasp on your mind um, these also correlate somewhat to the alchemical elements namely the elements of fire and water with fire being activity energy, willpower, and water being emotions, subconscious, dreams, and so on. And I won't go into that too in depth in this video, perhaps in future videos. But anyway, that's a quick rundown of the seven principles. I know I didn't go into them in much detail, but I just wanted to give you guys a quick video running them down and trying to explain them in a simple way that everyone could understand. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, then leave a comment down below let me know your thoughts have you got a copy of the Kabbalion? Uh, do you have any particular hermetic texts that you really like and would like me to read a bit of or talk a bit about well let me know in the comments below and remember subscribe give the video a thumbs up and after you've left a comment share this with some of your friends that you think would be interested in this